because we crashed below 30,000, and we just did. We have officially gone below 30,000. <laughs> and um, now this is like the freak out number. So a lot of people are going to get freaked out, which I think is a good thing. And let's open the chart up here a little bit. So my next buy level is right here at 27,500. And then I have 25,500 and also um, 23,500. And let's see what we can do here. Let me go over and work the numbers. But anyway, um, yeah, those are the, the levels that we have. So now if we get down to these areas and I get fills, I'm going to be putting in another 40% plus of what I already invested 100% of um, from last time. So let's say that I made uh, a few hundred percent uh, from the past year uh, off of trading. And I'm taking the original investment, the 100%, I'm back in it from this level all the way down to here, uh, back to the 30K level. Uh, that is just where, you know, I, I, you know, that's where I bracketed that level of buys and so forth, which made sense. And now my next level is I'm taking profits as we go down uh, from what I made from last year, uh, from my cumulative, you know, and expanding on that. So I'll have more Bitcoin. And in the future, I might sell some of that above that 49, 5,500 level. Um, that would be one level. Or, like I said, I might just hold on and wait and see where we are at the end of the year and go for that 118.8 number. Um, that's what I would go for. Now, there is a scenario where we can go into a complete bullet, uh, bearish phase that lasts a long time. Ooh, that would suck. And uh, might at last a, a year, I think, is what the, the stats on that are. Um, but that's the lower end of the spectrum. More likely is we're to hit summer and rocket upwards. And who knows what the news will be, maybe. Who knows? Uh, Warren Buffett buys Bitcoin <laughs> or some silly stuff like that. It's not going to really matter. Um, that would be inflation hits. The value of the dollar, you know, anything, any number of, uh, you know, financial crash, the, the, the dollar's worth nothing, and uh, we have hyperinflation or some something like that. Um, any number of things are going to be likely responsible, and then people are going to be like, oh, shit, then the panic buying starts. Your Michael Sailors aren't buying for fun, you know. They don't know where the bottom is. Neither do I. Um, they're just buying as it goes lower for the future because they know what the future is likely to bring, right? I want to address that. Uh, they're going off the numbers. They, they don't really care. You know, the panic and so forth, great. Uh, let it go down. Let, let all the, um, uh, the short term and let the Chinese sell and all of that and push prices down. That, that's fantastic. You get to buy cheaper Bitcoin, which I'm in favor of. <laughs> um, but at the same time, we do have to look at the numbers and we have to look at it on a relative basis and say to ourselves, where are we going from here? And let's go to a clean chart so we can go over and, and see, take some lines away and see what we can see. What, what do we see? Well, this is a convoluted pattern, right? This is, um, what do you have here? What, what is this? What can we mark? So I'm going to mark a few spots that I can see. Excuse me, my sinuses are bugging me. Um, boom, 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 boom. Now this measures with um, the spikes in the volume. This is what I'm really looking at here is where the volume impetus is. So I've got one here. I've got one spike here. See that one right there that matches with up the up move. And then the one that goes to the down move here, that matches. Um, this one here is low on volume. So that tells me something. That's lower volume. Even on the up move all the way up here, it had lower volume. Okay, interesting. So it's telling me a whole story. And 
Let's do, 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 do. Now, where do we go down from here? Could we go all the way down to the 23K number? We could, but this pattern here has a number that I'd have to calculate the statistics on this. I'll have to get back to that and do that later, but I'm not, I'm not gonna really worry about it. I'm gonna mark it all the way down to the 20, if I extended it all the way down here, 22 about. Um, hmm. do, 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 do. 31, 2, 30, so 11, from here, okay. And 61.8, so probably a little bit higher. Like right around that 23. All right, so anyway, this is what we're looking at right now. And um, will it continue and really break down? Not always. There's a, also a good percentage of this pattern only going to um, about 127%. So uh, there's a possibility it could truncate like this as well. But this is only one pattern. The volume has a few things in it that I have to go over and calculate. Um, and uh, I'll get back to that on there now that we've broken through and I can see what the volume is on the downside I have to go over and you know see the scenarios that are gonna play out um, but the only thing that I would be looking for from here is again back up to this area up here which is the 4950k area uh, and that's it there's that's the lowest area stretches around here let's say boom, boom, boom. so going out in the future that could be a resistance zone and let's put that up there and we're in the May period another thing I want to do is draw a, another box and from May 1st there's that right here this was our May to July. I think it's the 21st of July. Um, I believe it ends right around the 2K. Let's see, let's draw a line from here. Now these are vectoring the square of price. None of this has to make any sense to you. I can uh, like I said, I'm going to go over in another video that shows you some of the uh, calculations that I use. Now, some of them may be beyond you, but I'm going to go over and use basic math as well from a starting, as if I was teaching a, a elementary school kid, because many of you don't have a math background. Um, when I talk about vectors and uh, uh, epsilon values and uh, all kinds of things that you're going to look at and you're going to say, what do you, I'll give you a basic understanding of calculations, which aren't, um, aren't hard for me to do as well as explain the idea of time, which is, you know, where you're calculating the time of something, the, um, vector, uh, which is the actual physical, um, lines and stuff that you see on the charts, the, uh, shapes and, uh, you know, and, also the arc or the energy of something where it, it expands or contracts, you know, where prices are slow and you know, low volatility or expanded with uh, high, you know, ups and downs and, and uh, high volatility. And it kind of tells you a story. And when you interject all three of those things together, where um, you combine them, the combinatorial, and you then do cross relation uh, ship of the statistics of each of those uh, that's where the magic is in what I do um, you know like me predicting that May to July this red box that you see right here and then the vector it would follow over time um, you know uh, there is a whole relationship in there of statistics that come from time uh, ge the um, geometric uh, uh, price, the actual what you see physically happening, and also the energy, which you don't see, um, that 
come together statistically. And, um, you know, there's all kinds of relationships as well that you go off of when you're doing that. And, you know, it's pretty interesting, the calculations that you can get in there. And uh, you can pick your, your end and start points. And I don't want to use this right now. That's going to confuse you. Um, but the, uh, I'll, I'll do another video on that. It's just too, uh, you're, it's not going to make sense. I'm totally taking you off course. But anyway, okay, so here's where we have from here to July 21st. So we still have another month about, right? This is 22nd today. And uh, of likely down movement being the, uh, the, the overall, you know, uh, so uh, the closer we get to this lower end around 2k, um, the stronger of a reversal uh, can occur. So when you're down a certain percentage of this and you're down the majority of it, let's say it goes down to 88% of this box. Um, and if it terminates right to this end point, then you can get the strongest bounce back um, possible. If it even goes under this, like this one over this one up here from this time period in time and whatnot, and it terminate, then cascades down very quickly. Um, that is because it had high uh, expansion up here, even though you don't see it in energy, um, of which pushes it all the way down and then follows the path to the end point. So you have your start and end points over here to there. And um, that's where the three algos that I use, and those are proprietary. I'm not going to share them or give them to anybody here. Um, they don't deserve them. I created them. And, uh, you know, big brokerages would love to have them. I'm absolutely sure of it. Uh, but uh, I, I don't feel like selling them or, you know, even explaining how they work. <laughs> um, I'll give you the ideology and, you know, the mechanics and some of the, the knowledge behind it. But uh, I'm not going to go over and uh, recreate uh what I do, because this is just my form of analysis, and it gives me an edge, and I plan to keep that the edge for many years to come. Uh, and uh, let's see, so we're following this path. We've gone under 30k. I've got my buy orders. You know where they are, and uh, they're 27.5, 25.5, and 23.5, and there's nothing for me to do. Um, you know, uh, that's basically it. Uh, it it's um, cumulative profit over time. That's what I care about. You know, so I, I'm not looking um, uh, for what is today going to bring me or tomorrow or even next month. You know, I'm looking at six months to a year to and on, and I want to see what my overall returns are going to be um, over time. And uh, stuff like this, uh, you know, where people panic and they're all freaked out and the end of crypto, you know, that's just part of the game. That's part of, uh, you know, they were saying that when we were, um, we went to 20K and went all the way back down to 3,000. And I was buying and buying and buying. And, you know, and again, when the, the pandemic hit and we last year and it went down to 5,000. And I was buying and buying and buying, and, and it went down to four th under 4,000. And again, I was buying. And, um, you know, we're, what happened? Then we went up to 60K. Holy shit, you know. And then people are surprised that we're, now we're back down to 30K. So that's, that's life. That's part of the game. And the thing is, the next time you get the up moves and so forth, uh, Good luck in trying to buy the, the prices as they go up because here's what happens. You're getting a totally different crowd of people buying Bitcoin. You're getting the Michael Saylors. You're getting these billionaires and millionaires. And when they figure out the value proposition of Bitcoin and crypto as a store of value for their assets and another way for them to uh, save on um, paying taxes and whatnot because that's the real hidden uh, gem of it. 
they're going to go over and just keep holding. And then you're going to see ridiculous prices um, far beyond the minimums of 118,000 or or even far beyond the 300,000 range up here, the 360. And these are all termination points that could possibly be the next cycle points for in the future. But we're talking about half a million and you know, if they do that, if they store their value there, just a percentage, remember, uh, you know, they're going to be looking for much bigger numbers. I've seen this. I, I've seen this when they've invested in all throughout my life. And I've watched how big players would hold. And they'd go for big, big runs, huge runs. Um, Tudor, Paul Tudor Jones, that, that guy, I mean... They're, I've seen it over and over again, and I have always find it fascinating how they hold on for long-term assets. And, uh, yeah, they, and it's kind of like fundamental investing um, is the only way I could put it. But uh, that's what I believe the future will bring. But we'll see. You know, it's not like I've ever been right before, statistically, right? <laughs> so, eh, yeah, maybe I'll get lucky. <laughs> So uh, anyway, so we are under the 29K. Hopefully I can get the, my fill on 27 and then 25.5 and 23.5. Um, so we'll see if we get those numbers down there. We're following the downward path and uh, coming to, um, you know, our start to end point here. And, uh, you know, all the numbers are lining up and everything looks completely cool and normal and I dig it I dig it and dig it wiggy it so that's all there is to it okay now I'm going to talk about the negative point I, I don't want to talk about but um, I, I keep having people attack the other trader in the room and I'm not even aware I don't follow his traits the swing and scalp channel I will not um, say anything about uh, because I don't follow their traits. I don't know their statistics. And you hit a man when he's down. All traders have drawdowns, like me right now. I'm holding on to longs, but prices are going down, right? I, I should be freaking out, right? No. I have a, a plan in the future. And statistically, the odds are in my favor and have been for a very long time. So do you think they're going to change on me? I mean, they could, but um, do you? what do you think the odds are? And that's what you go by. Now, if this person is mostly profitable, maybe not always profitable, uh, within a given period of time, let's say a year or more, uh, and they have a few bad months, uh, but they make more than they lose. And that's the key thing is when you're looking at trading, you want positive, um, uh, positive expectancy, it's called. That basically means over a period, given period of time that you make more than you lose. Well, I believe this person probably makes more than they lose. And you guys are attacking him for what's going on now. And you're doing it in the room. And that's not acceptable. So if you do that in the room and you attack or you complain, um, I have to, I'll have to i have to ban you. And I, I hate to do that, but I, I will have to do that. If you have an issue and you don't like something and you want to complain, that's fine. Do it to an admin. Don't disrupt the room and, and try to cause... Uh, 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 you know, uh, people to get upset and what, you know, what is that? Th that is uh, uncalled for and it's disrespectful to me. And if you piss me off, I'll just ban you. I don't care. Uh, I, I do this for myself more than anything. Um, uh, and I, you know, I, I, I don't need it. I, if uh, you want to be disgruntled, that's your choice. But uh, from the other trader, and you want to do those automatic signals, I'm not telling you not to or to. You know, I, I give you my analysis. You could even turn off or use small amounts of money on their trades. But uh, if they have a system or style of trading and it doesn't match up to the market and they're taking losses and I'm contra them, you might want to listen to me because my statistics are frigging, uh, I make even the best of analysts look bad because of my accuracy. It's very high. 
And uh, I, I don't want to you know, go on about that because uh, I, I've just statistically been very, I, all I do is observe what the market does and I plan uh, uh, what I'm going to do and I execute. That's it. I'm not buying for fun. You know, it's no fun watching the market go down, right? Um, but it's not an emotional decision to me. I'm just playing the numbers as I always have. And because I have that focus, and let me make that very clear, that's what you need as a trader. There's no emotion in trading. The market doesn't care what you feel, think, or heard, or any of that. Numbers are numbers. And unless you are willing to pay attention to what is actually there, you're not going to see anything. You will be a blind man, okay? You, you will be a blind man. And uh, that's the sad thing. There's a lot of delusionary people in our world now because they're, they're fed off of rhetoric and emotion and uh, uh, bullshit, as I call it. They don't look at the numbers. Take Trump, for example. He's an idiot. And uh, he lost because he alienated most of the country. That's it. It's just that simple. And he did nothing for the, the virus and the pandemic. He said, we're rounding the curve. It's going to go away. Well, when you do that, you're upsetting the majority of your audience and whatnot. And um, that's just life. And the numbers don't lie. And you might lie and you might say whatever you want. You could uh, argue and, and complain. But what good is that going to do you? Nothing. It's, it's a pointless thing. Life's going to happen and numbers are going to happen. And that's just the way it is. And you deal with it. Um, but you don't go in the room and start complaining and acting like an ass. Because uh, I'll ban you. And uh, there are no second chances. I just want to make that very clear. Once you go beyond you know, a limit and I ask you not to do something and you keep doing it, uh, there aren't going to be any second chances. So let me make that very clear to you. And um, so don't do it. Don't be stupid. And uh, if you want to be emotional, you know, fine. And don't disrespect the trader. If you don't understand what their numbers are over a period of time, then, you know, or if you don't trust them, then don't use them. But um, don't abuse me over what somebody else uh, does. And also look at it from a long-term perspective and stop thinking so short-term. A lot of you are new to trading and you, you see something up front and you say, oh, that must, that must mean it's no good. Uh, no, you have to go from long periods of time. Um, if people are mostly successful over a long period of time and they make money versus lose money, that's what matters. If you don't get that, then there's no point. You should really go to Vegas or something. Uh, trading is not going to be for you and you're likely not going to make any money in trading or investing. Uh, for that matter, because you won't have the patience and the understanding of uh, how markets work. And, uh, you know, a man without a plan, is it's, it's useless. It's not even worth talking to him. So that is my, uh, my point and my tirade. I don't want any dissension in the room. If you have an issue, you have another room you can go to to complain and uh, talk about the statistics. I'm going to make sure that other room is made uh, in uh, for the scalp and swing channel for the other trader and he can answer all your questions here because it's not what I do in the platinum room all right uh, it's not the way I trade and it's not something I'm even gonna pay any attention to I don't pay attention to other signal providers I can give an F less what they do honestly I have to focus on my numbers I've got my own way of trading and it's always worked for me and um, you know if I make a hundred and 50% averaged over five years on, you know, from start to finish, um, 150% a year. Uh, do you know how many fund managers would kill for those numbers? <laughs> um, of course, not every year is perfect, but cumulative average, if you understood the value of that, of what you can take a small amount of money and turn into a very large amount of money over time, um, that means something. And it might not mean anything to you, but I don't care because... Uh, you know, if you want to, you want to make a living at this, and this is what you want to do. That that's what matters. You know, the, the proof is in the pudding. The, you know, the end result is what is the end. You know, it's like what you get paid a year. You know, if it doesn't go up, then you know, if you want to be a, working at McDonald's or whatever, and 
you don't want to grow, then good for you. But uh, that's not my way. And if it's not, it's not my way, it's the highway. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. But anyway, that's where we are. We've broken uh, the 30K. Uh, and hopefully I'll get my fills for 29.5. And we're following this path on down. And uh, we'll see where we go from here. Anyway, have a good week, and uh, I'll talk to you again next time.